Good morning, and welcome to Resurrection Episcopal Church. I'm Mother Leslie Stewart, and we're so glad to have you with us today. You can find our service bulletin where everything is printed for you to follow along on our Facebook page, probably at the top of this post, and on our website, resurrectionplano.org. And once you have the service bulletin, we are ready to begin worship. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, and blessed be his kingdom, now and forever. Amen. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Be with you and also with me. 
Let us pray. O God, the protector of all who trust in you, without whom nothing is strong, nothing is holy, increase and multiply upon us your mercy, that with you as our ruler and guide, we may so pass through things temporal, that we lose not the things eternal. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of Genesis, chapter 29, starting at the 15th verse. Laban said to Jacob, Because you are my kinsman, should you therefore serve me for nothing? Tell me, what shall your wages be? Now Laban had two daughters. The name of the elder was Leah, and the name of the younger was Rachel. Leah's eyes were lovely, and Rachel was graceful and beautiful. Jacob loved Rachel, so he said, I will serve you seven years for your younger daughter, Rachel. Laban said, It is better that I give her to you than that I should give her to any other man. Stay with me. So Jacob served seven years for Rachel, and they seemed, they seemed to him but a few days because of the love he had for her. Then Jacob said to Laban, Give me my wife, that I may go into her, for my time is completed. So Laban gathered together all the people of the place and made a feast. But in the evening he took his daughter Leah and brought her to Jacob, and he went into her. Laban gave his maid Zelpha to his daughter Leah to be her maid. When morning came, it was Leah. And Jacob said to Laban, What is this that you have done to me? Did I not serve you for Rachel? Why then have you deceived me? Laban said, This is not done in our country, giving the younger before the firstborn. Complete the week of this one, and we will give you the other also in return for serving me another seven years. Jacob did so and completed his work. Then Laban gave him his daughter, Rachel, as a wife. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The psalm appointed today is Psalm 105. We will read it responsibly by whole verse. Give thanks to the Lord and call upon his name. Make known his deeds among the peoples. Sing to him, sing praises to him, and speak of all his marvelous works. Glory in his holy name. Let the hearts of those who seek the Lord rejoice. Search for the Lord and his strength. Continually seek his face. Remember the marvels he has done, his wonders and the judgments of his mouth. O offspring of Abraham, his servant, O children of Jacob, his chosen. He is the Lord, our God. His judgments prevail in all the world. He has always been mindful of his covenant, the promise he made for a thousand generations, the covenant he made with Abraham, the oath that he swore to Isaac, which he established as a statute for Jacob, an everlasting covenant for Israel, saying, To you will I give the land of Canaan, to be your allotted inheritance. Alleluia. A reading from the book of Romans, chapter 8, starting at the 26th verse. The Spirit helps us in our weakness, for we do not know how to pray as we ought. But that very Spirit intercedes with sighs too deep for words. And God, who searches the heart, knows what is in the mind of the Spirit, because the Spirit intercedes for the saints according to the will of God. We know that all things work together for good for those who love God, who are called according to his purpose. For those, for those whom he foreknew, he also predestined to be conformed to the image of his Son, in order that he might be firstborn within a large family. And those whom he predestined, he also called. And those whom he called, he also justified. And those whom he justified, he also glorified. What then are we to say about these things? If God is for us, who is against us? He who did not withhold his own son, but gave him up for all of us, will he not with him also give us everything else? Who will bring any charge against God's elect? It is God who justifies. Who is to condemn? It is Christ Jesus who died, yes, who was raised, who is at the right hand of God, who indeed intercedes for us. Who will separate us from the love of Christ? Will hardship or distress or persecution or famine or nakedness or peril or sword? 
as it is written, For your sake we are being killed all day long. We are accounted as sheep to be slaughtered. No, in all these things we are more than conquerors through him who loved us. For I am convinced that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor rulers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor powers, nor height, nor depth, nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus our Lord. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our gospel reading is from St. Matthew, chapter 13, beginning at the 31st verse. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to Matthew. Glory to you, Lord Christ. Jesus put before them another parable. The kingdom of heaven is like a mustard seed that someone took and sowed in his field. It is the smallest of all the seeds, but when it is grown, it is the greatest of shrubs and becomes a tree, so that the birds of the air come and make nests in its branches. He told them another parable. The kingdom of heaven is like yeast that a woman took and mixed in with three measures of flour until all of it was leavened. The kingdom of heaven is like treasure hidden in a field, which someone found and hid. Then in his joy, he goes and sells all that he has and buys that field. Again, the kingdom of heaven is like a merchant in search of fine pearls. On finding one pearl of great value, he went and sold all that he had and bought it. Again, the kingdom of heaven is like a net that was thrown into the sea and caught fish of every kind. When it was full, they drew it ashore sat down and put the good into baskets, but threw out the bad. So it will be at the end of the age. The angels will come out and separate the evil from the righteous and throw them into the furnace of fire where there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Have you understood all this? They answered, yes. And he said to them, Therefore, every scribe who has been trained for the kingdom of heaven is like the master of a household who brings out his treasure, what is new and what is old. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ.
how do we describe the kingdom of God? How would you describe it? Kingdom of God's rule is available now, but for those of you who know what it is like to live in God's kingdom, you know that it sometimes is hard to put into words. How do you tell your friend not to panic when your own husband is in an emergency room having an emergency catheterization and everyone else is at their wit's end and you somehow have a peace that passes understanding? How do you explain that to someone? How do you tell someone that you wear a mask? Because unlike the political rhetoric of this world's kingdoms, you're a citizen of another kingdom in which we do unto others as we would have want as we would want to have done unto ourselves is a decision about loving your neighbor as yourself sometimes words like that get you into trouble sometimes words like that are not popular and so jesus often taught in parables we don't have them so much today but there is a there was a time in american culture where there was something called a social novel these were modern day parables. They were fictional stories that were meant to highlight social truths, the social issues becoming personalized by a character. You might think of To Kill a Mockingbird, for example, or Hemingway's A Farewell to Arms, or John Steinbeck's The Grapes of Wrath. Mike and I went on vacation a couple of years ago to an area of the country known as Steinbeck Country in Monterey and Carmel. You may know John Steinbeck from The Grapes of Wrath, but also from Cannery Row and many, many other things. But he also wrote a short book that I had uh, called a novella that I had never heard of before until we went on that trip. And the name of that novella is The Pearl. He wrote it while living in a small house in Carmel. And later in interviews, he called The Pearl a parable. I think he had today's gospel reading in mind because a little research shows that he originally called it the pearl of the world. And what fascinates me about it is his insight into this parable that Jesus tells. Jesus gives several examples in our reading today that describe what the kingdom of heaven is like. And usually all of those examples are from our perspective. What's in it for us? The shelter of the mustard seed, the hidden treasure of a field, a giant catch of fish. But with the pearl, Steinbeck does something different. And I think he's contrasting the kingdoms of this world with the kingdom of heaven. And the story of the pearl goes like this. It's the story of a pearl diver, Kino, and his wife, Juana, and their son, Coyotito. When Coyotito, an infant, is stung by a scorpion, Kino, his father, must find a way to pay the town doctor to treat him. But the doctor denies Kino, an indigenous fisherman, the health care that he needs out of just racism, which enrages Kino. Shortly thereafter, Kino discovers an enormous pearl, which he thinks, I will sell this in order to pay the doctor. Everyone begins to call this the pearl of the world, and many people begin to covet it. That very night, Kino is attacked in his own home. Determined to get rid of the pearl the, as quickly as he can, the following morning he takes the pearl to an auction in town. However, the auction is actually a corrupt sham, and it always has been what we might call systematic racism. The buyers fake auction each pearl. In other words, they pretend to bid against each other. There are many buyers at this auction, but in truth, they all work for one man. He pays them a salary and they turn their pearls over to him and he resells them outside of the town for a much higher price and thereby cheat the locals. The corrupt pearl buyers try to convince Kino that what he has is just the equivalent of fool's gold. It doesn't have any real value. Kino decides to go over the mountains to the capital to find a better price anyway. He knows that they're lying to him. Juana, Kino's wife, sees that the pearl brings darkness and greed in people and sneaks out of the house late at night to throw the pearl back into the ocean. When Kino catches her, 
he attacks her and leaves her on the beach. While returning to his hut with the pearl, Kino is attacked by another man, but Kino stabs and kills him. Kino thinks the man has taken the pearl, but Juana shows him that she still has it in her possession. When they get back to their hut, they find that the hut has been set on fire and the family's canoe, their means of making a living, has been ruined. They're now trying to destroy the way that he earns a living. Kino and Juana then spend the day hiding in the hut of Kino's brother, Juan Thomas, and his wife, gathering provisions for their trip to the capital city. Kino and Juana and Coyotito, they leave in the dark of night, and after a brief rest in the morning, Kino spots trackers following them. Well aware that they might not be able to hide from the attackers, they begin hiking into the mountains. They find a cave near a natural water hole where the exhausted family hides and waits. Kino realizes that they're going to have to kill the trackers if they are going to survive and make the trip to the capital. As he prepares to attack, the men hear a baby crying, and it sounds like a baby's cry, but they decide that it's more like a coyote with a litter. The trackers decide to fire in the direction of the sound, but just before they do, Kino launches at them, and he knocks them off balance. He proceeds to kill all three attackers, but as he travels back up to the cave, he finds that the misfire that he had caused actually shot Coyotito in the head. In the morning, Kino and Juana return to La Paz with Coyotito's dead body wrapped in a sling. No longer wanting the pearl, Kino throws the pearl back into the ocean. And that's how the story ends. It's a sad story. Steinbeck said that he wrote this novella because he wanted to look at the theme of what really has value. He's showing what the kingdoms of the world are like. They are like crooked merchants who pursue you for what they can take from you. They lie and say that you don't possess anything of value or your life is not of any value. Man is viewed as a means to an end rather than as an end in and of himself the character of who he is. Even when you have what this world's kingdom values, it never really feels like a life-giving experience making that exchange. At least not for long, it wears off. I remember when Mike and I first moved to Plano, we kind of marveled at all the ads in the Plano magazine of that time. All the ads were for cosmetic dentistry and cosmetic surgery. It was very clear there was a certain image uh, to uphold if you're going to live in Plano. We may have overspent a little bit on furniture and things to make our house nice. We may have overspent a little bit on clothing and jewelry and things that made us appear a certain way. But what we realized is that none of those things made us happy. We did not find our happiness there because they did not have real value. But the kingdom of heaven is like a merchant in search of fine pearls. Have you only heard this parable preached as if it's from your perspective, like you're the one searching for fine pearls and you find that in the kingdom of heaven? I believe that that's true. And I think that's one way to tell the story. But what if it's from God's perspective? On finding one pearl of great value, he went and sold all that he had and bought it. Or as our New Testament reading from Romans tells us today, he who did not withhold his own son, but gave him up for all of us, will he not with him also give us everything else? God gave all that he had, even his son, when he found you. You are the pearl of great value. God is the merchant who delights in finding you. And the great joy of any Christian, someone who has already been found by God and made their way into the kingdom of heaven, is that we get to join God in his search. We've done all kinds of things as a church plant in order to find people and invite them to participate in this kingdom of heaven. We invite people to discover that they are of great value 
They are the beloved just for who they are as a child of God. And we invite them to join in the good merchant search for what has true value, the people that God loves so much that he even gave his son. Where is there a pearl of great value in your life? Who do you know that needs to be told of their value and their worth? Let us not miss any opportunity. Remember, the good news in Matthew is that the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Go ahead and tell someone what the kingdom of heaven is like and that it is available here and now. Let us pray. O God, the protector of all who trust in you, without whom nothing is strong, nothing is holy, increase and multiply upon us your mercy, that with you as our ruler and guide, we may so pass through the things temporal that we lose not the things eternal. Through Jesus, Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. And now let us affirm our faith using the ancient words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. In peace we pray to you, Lord God. For all people in their daily life and work, for our families, friends, and neighbors, and for those who are alone. For this community, the nation, and the world. For all who work for justice, freedom, and peace. For the just and proper use of your creation. For the victims of hunger, fear, injustice, and oppression. For all who are in danger, sorrow, or any kind of trouble. For those who minister to the sick, the friendless, and the needy. For the peace and unity of the Church of God. For all who proclaim the gospel and all who seek the truth. For Michael Curry, our presiding bishop, and George R. Sumner, our bishop, and for all bishops and other ministers, for all who serve God in his church, for the special needs and concerns of this congregation. Hear us, Lord, for your mercy is great. We thank you, Lord, for all the blessings of this life. We will exalt you, O God, our King, and praise your name forever and ever. We pray for all who have died, that they may have a place in your eternal kingdom. Lord, let your loving kindness be upon them who put their trust in you. We pray to you also for the forgiveness of our sins. Have mercy upon us, most merciful Father, in your compassion, forgive us our sins, known and unknown, things done and left undone. And so uphold us by your Spirit, that we may live and serve you in newness of life, to the honor and glory of your name, through Jesus Christ our Lord. 
Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you. Forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen you in all goodness and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you and also with me. As always, we encourage you to extend that peace beyond our church, beyond this table, certainly, and reach out to your friends and family uh, who may be feeling isolated and separated at this time. That's a great way to spread the good news of the kingdom. Hi, friends. Here's this week's announcements. We are going to have Blessing of the Backpacks Thursday, August 6th from 7 to 7.30. The Zoom link will be sent out in the e-news. Students of any age, parents, grandparents, and teachers, please join us for this interactive prayer time. We'll collect your prayers via a live word cloud building technology. So we'll see everyone's prayer word added to the cloud live as it happens. The event includes musical performances by uh, McKenna Stenson, prayers for college students and those in academia by college minister, Dr. Laura Burnett, prayers for young students led by Janice Truitt, our children's minister, Prayers for Families, led by Don Strain, the men's group leader and Lighthouse Church leader for dads. Please invite anyone returning to school who would appreciate prayer. We hope this special dedicated time of prayer helps them sense God's presence so they can focus on learning. Thank you so much for participating with Flat Paul. Uh, those who are going to receive the Flat Paul book this week, uh, <laughs> please print out Flat Paul's document and take him on some adventures with you. We still have a few weeks left. We'll be doing Flat Paul through the end of July. And thank you for all of those who have already taken Flat Paul on a summertime adventure. It's been a really fun summer. While I'm on vacation, Father Roy Thomas is going to be providing pastoral coverage. Father Roy is an interim rector of Good Shepherd Cedar Hill while their rector is taking some sabbatical time. He's also a chaplain at Baylor Hospital. For any pastoral emergencies, you can reach him by email at reverendroyathomas at gmail.com or you can contact Shannon or Janice uh, for his phone number. And again, Shannon's email is shannon at resurrectionplano.org. Our men's breakfast is going to be meeting Saturday, August 1st at 8 a.m., White Rock Trail Park. Usually we have it the second Saturday of the month, but due to vacation plans, we're moving it to the very first Saturday of August. Uh, the men have decided to meet live and in person and six feet apart. Uh, I'm maintaining all the social distance protocols and things like that. Just bring your own breakfast, lawn chair, and coffee. If you have any questions, contact Don at resurrectionplano.org. Episcopal Family Ministry, you can still sign up to uh, attend these sessions. They are meant to offer support for families, um, especially through this time of COVID. Grieving lost opportunities, finding peace, managing stress, and nurturing your marriage. Uh, I hope that you avail yourself of this very helpful resource. Communion pickup and mask pickup will resume on August 8th. I apologize. Originally, we had said it would be um, the week before that, but we had to make an adjustment to our vacation plans. So it will now resume on August 8th. Virtual coffee hour is still, still being hosted even when I'm out of town. Thank you, Dr. Laura Burnett, for hosting. You can join on Sundays, 9.30 to 10, 10 a.m. And we have convenient ways to give, as always. You can give online at resurrectionplano.org. You can mail a check to Stephen Drive in Plano, or you can text to give. Uh, 73256, just type in Res Plano and the amount. Now we offer these prayers for birthdays and anniversaries. For anyone celebrating a birthday this week, this prayer and blessing is for you. Watch over your children, O Lord, as their days increase. Bless and guide them wherever they may be. Strengthen them when they stand. Comfort them when discouraged or sorrowful. Raise them up if they fall. 
And in their hearts may your peace, which passes understanding, abide all the days of their lives. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And for anniversaries, anyone celebrating an anniversary this week, this prayer and blessing is for you. All praise and blessing to you, God of love, source of blessing for married life. All praise to you, for you have created courtship and marriage, joy and gladness, feasting and laughter, pleasure and delight. May your blessing come in full upon them. May they know your presence in their joys and in their sorrows. May they reach old age in the company of friends and come at last to your eternal kingdom. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself for us an offering and sacrifice to God. Lord be with you and also with me. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give him thanks and praise. It is right and a good and joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, through Jesus Christ our Lord, who on the first day of the week overcame death and the grave and by his glorious resurrection open to us the way of everlasting life. Therefore we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels, and with all the company of heaven, who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. Holy and gracious Father, in your infinite love you made us for yourself. And when we had fallen into sin and become subject to evil and death, you in your mercy sent Jesus Christ, your only and eternal Son, to share our human nature, to live and die as one of us, to reconcile us to you, the God and Father of all. He stretched out his arms upon the cross and offered himself in obedience to your will, a perfect sacrifice for the whole world. On the night he was handed over to suffering and death, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread. And when he'd given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine. And when he'd given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. We celebrate the memorial of our redemption, O Father, in this sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving. Recalling his death, resurrection, and ascension, we offer you these gifts. 
Sanctify them by your Holy Spirit to be for your people the body and blood of your Son, the holy food and drink of new and unending life in him. Sanctify us also that we may faithfully receive this holy sacrament and serve you in unity, constancy, and peace. And at the last day, bring us with all your saints into the joy of your eternal kingdom. All this we ask through your Son, Jesus Christ, by him and with him and in him. In the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. And now, as our Savior has taught us, we are bold to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Alleluia. Christ, our Passover, is sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep the feast. Alleluia. The gifts of God for the people of God. Take them in remembrance that Christ died for you and feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving. For those of you who are unable to pick up communion, we say this prayer of spiritual communion, saying together, in union, blessed Jesus, with the faithful gathered at every altar of your church, where your blessed body and blood are offered this day, I long to offer you praise and thanksgiving for creation and all the blessings of this life, for the redemption won for us by your life, death, and resurrection, for the means of grace and the hope of glory and particularly for the blessings given me. I believe that you are truly present in the Holy Sacrament, and since I cannot at this time receive communion, I pray you to come into my heart. I unite myself with you and embrace you with all my heart, my soul, and my mind. Let nothing separate me from you. Let me serve you in this life until, by your grace, I come to your glorious kingdom and unending peace. Amen. Now let's gather our thoughts of thanksgiving using the post-communion prayer. Almighty and ever-living God, we thank you for feeding us with the spiritual food of the most precious body and blood of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and for assuring us in these holy mysteries that we are living members of the body of your Son and heirs of your eternal kingdom. And now, Father, send us out to do the work you have given us to do, to love and serve you as faithful witnesses of Christ our Lord. To him, to you, and to the Holy Spirit, be honor and glory, now and forever. Amen. In the peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. And the blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit be upon you and remain with you always. Amen.
Hallelujah. Let us go forth into the world rejoicing in the Holy Spirit. Thanks be to God. Alleluia. Thank you for being with us this morning. May God bless you and keep you in this coming week. And we'll see you back next time.